Have you ever had a dream since childhood that you've never been able to do and then suddenly you're on the doorstep of this next adventure and that's where I'm this morning so you'll realize that I'm a little bit nervous from excitement. <laughs> so I'm back here at Hirakas Point and I'm going diving like snorkeling kind of thing. I haven't had the opportunity to do this and I've got Mark Dixon with me today and he's actually gonna help me with it and I'm gonna look at his world I'm gonna share his world with you a little bit so <laughs> here we go <laughs> Can I introduce to you Mark Dixon? Mark, thank you for helping me today. Oh, it's wonderful to um, come and show you that my, my neck of the woods here, Jean. <laughs> Your neck of the woods. I've been dreaming about this for years. And naturally, I'm a little bit nervous because it's an area that I've never been in before. And I'm really grateful that you are here. So, lead the way. <laughs> okay, no, for sure. Okay. So we just arrived here at Gerekes Point again. You'll remember that in episode two, that's exactly where we were. The ocean today looks beautiful, but the pools are crisp clear, which is very, very nice. Should make for some great footage. Yeah, it's nice and warm. I hope the water is as warm as well. We're quickly gonna change. We are all geared up and ready to go. We're going into the water now. I am not gonna do any more talking. I'll do voiceover from whatever experience is lying ahead of me. But yeah, we're going into the pools here at Hierakas Point and uh, <laughs> I'm very excited. If you wanna go snorkeling, there are some basic gear that you will need to be successful when entering into this amazing underwater kingdom. A diving mask, a snorkel, a wetsuit or something similar, a pair of diving fins, water shoes and a few fancy gloves that as well, and then a weight belt. And as this is my first time, I naturally had a couple of missing items on this list, especially the weight belt. Now the purpose of the weight belt is to counteract the excess buoyancy while underwater and not to float like a tube on the surface. Mark Dixon is a marine biologist that currently focuses on the coastline of the Garden Route. He also coordinates the Strandloper project that is gathering research about the impact of human activities on the coastal marine life, like ghost fishing and agricultural effects on the ocean. And today he is introducing me to this amazing underwater world. As soon as we submerge in the tide pools, our first thrilling encounter. Out of the um, one overhang, this octopus came through and I set up my camera, it went into its little lair and was just poking out. What is fascinating with it um, is that it was trying to catch some of the little gobies that were around it and there was that one little zebra fish, just very very fascinated with it, kept on going and pestering it. It was fascinated with watching us diving there looked at the camera now there's something interesting about octopus they love red they go for the red light so I had set up the little GoPro and it's got the little indicator light that flashes red and that is um, what it went for 
it sent out an exploratory tentacle just to test to see what it was pull the camera towards it it was a little bit heavier than it anticipated so what they always do when they're investigating something like that is they'll stay attached with two or three legs um, onto the substrate where they are and then they'll go and grab something with the rest of the tentacles and they're incredibly strong and they'll pull that in towards themselves anyway that's what this little guy did uh, he pulled the camera in eventually uh, I had to convince it to leave that Snorkeling 101 for dummies. For dummies. I do not have the right gear. Um, I'm feeling like a little kid. I don't have a, a, a weight belt. So I'm struggling to stay underneath the water, which is extremely funny, which makes me laugh. And then I lose all my breath. I have to say this. It is absolutely amazing down there. You know what? Mark really knows what he's doing. I didn't realize how much life there is in one of these tide pools. But let's get back into the water and into the next tide pool that was much bigger than the first one. Now I could stretch my legs and use my fins. In this pool the fish were clearly much bigger but yet there were still the smallest creatures playing their role in the ocean. Mark carefully captured all the fine details with his cameras and the data will soon be used in the publishing of research papers on the condition of the corals and the sea. I got sidetracked at enjoying this new world and while diving around all the rock formations and crevices I became comfortable in this new enchanted environment. This is awesome. This is beautiful. This is un... <gasps> We've just been diving at Herica's Point here, snorkeling. We've got some of these lovely pools over here, exposed at spring low tide, so that's over the full moon and the new moon phases. Beautiful to come in here, you get about 90 minutes to two hours of safe, comfortable uh, snorkeling in, in the uh, tidal pools. And you know, some of the things that you're looking at uh, as you walk past and you look into there, you'll see the little fish, little black tails and mullets and a whole lot of strea peas. But the real beauty of being in here is when you go snorkeling. So you will suddenly then see um, over the, under the ledges, um, as you look underneath, you'll start seeing the sea fans, um, you'll start seeing sea anemones, you'll get a lot of uh, starfish, so this, um, the uh, pincushion starfish, the spiny starfish, you've got the sea urchins, which you have to be careful of because they're very prickly and can give you quite a nasty wound. But then there's soft corals, there's um, a whole lot of other, um, a, a myriad of creatures there. And that's the beauty about this. Every time you go in, you're going to find something different.
As we finished our dive, we spotted something in the ocean. Yeah, they're just hanging there. Mark could not resist and had to get closer to a couple of fur seals relaxing in the open water. with seals they're just maxing and relaxing somewhere out there and he's hanging with them the juvenile was amazing he just came in big bug eyes and was very very curious put the camera in his face and um, yeah he, he, he was unsure the adult just drifted past me and they went out to sea followed them as much as I could and uh, but always the juvenile coming back in bug eyes look at me go around incredibly number in the world. So yeah. I didn't do the amazing episode that I was thinking of. So we'll have to do it again. It's an excuse actually just to swim with him again. But oh, absolutely amazing. Tide is coming in so we gotta go. We'll see you next time. And remember to like, subscribe and share. For more information, contact Mark on the Strandlooper Project Facebook page or the website and see how you can get involved.